Right, this is a, a one-off. This gentleman's got a... He's an end user, but I treat him as trade because uh, he has about 30 sets a year done with us. This is... Uh, Glen. So... Oh no, it's not uh, it's not the person I'm thinking of. It doesn't matter, right. Um so we did a major three thousand and here's a major three thousand that he's bought. So it's got a new standard replacement mic, which is fine. Uh, what does he say? Hi Richard, the major three thousand is very quiet on TX and the RX audio is also not as loud as normal. The wiring's dodgy on the back of the volume control and it's a yellow wire that's bare as well. Okay. Now, as I've said before, when I did the last one of these, I've only seen two of these prior to that last one. That doesn't make them rare. And somebody put the comment, well, I've got three. Yeah, they probably have. I've only seen two in 40 years. So, uh, and then we're on to a big box of sets again um, I think we'll do the big box of sets I think we'll do three and then somebody else's job and then do another three and then somebody else's job and work it like that I think we've got some realistic handles in there uh, of the um, big variety and then another customer sent in um, I think something like a realistic thousand one and a realistic thousand two so we've got those two get in after the big box or in between the big box I have to think of some way of doing it uh, we've got far more sets in than I ever envisaged you see so get this powered up we'll get a, a sheet of paper out and we'll see what it's doing etc etc get that plugged into extension speaker get that plugged into I'm just taking the bench with me into PA the test gear has been on for about an hour so we're at the right temperature. I'll power this up at full whack because the customer's obviously powered it up. I'll get first sniff of the curly mic lead because it's a new mic. So be on channel 20 and we'll switch to PA. Testing one, two, testing one, two, one, two, one, one, two. That's very quiet. Whoa. That's not good. No. Let's just switch this between CB and PA a few times in case it's a, a dirty switch. Because it's a self wiping. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Right, it is quite than it should be. Right, I'll just go and get a, um, a sheet and we'll start filling things in. Okay, let's uh, put picture in picture on and switch that to the right camera, just like that. Let's go on the three watt scale. So, for three watts is for the deflection. Oh, it's doing more than that. It's 4.1 and on channel 40, 4.1 and on channel 1, it's 4.05, which is well balanced but too much. I hope it's not at full whack to do that. So, what's low power doing? 80 milliwatts. And the transmit current for normal power is 1.108, which is actually good. Deviation, voila. Oh, I had to retune this, didn't I? because we did that dreadful handheld thing. Wallow. Where are we? One, two, one, two. Wallow. 
Why haven't you got any transmitted audio? Wallow. One, two, one, two. I'll just do this with our standard replacement mic. Um, I don't want to enter. When we've got a problem with the PA being quiet and we've got transmitted audio being quiet, I just want to make sure it's not the new mic that's faulty. So we'll use our standard replacement mic. One, two, one, two. Let's go to PA and just listen to ours. Testing one, two, testing one, two. It's just as quiet. So there isn't. I think we're going to we're going to find there's something wrong in the microphone preamp because we've got no transmitted deviation and the audio is very very low. So I've now got my test set on 0.5. Um, as a, as a it's normally we have it on five and we're looking at two. So I've now got it on 0.5. So I'm really looking at uh, at a very fine scale. Um, let's just make sure it's tuned once again. One, two, wall, wall, wall. It's hardly moving. Where's our handle? Let's put this to full volume. One, two, one, two, wall. Yeah, there's no transmitted audio. So it's, um, I'll just put it's nil at this point. So the frequency, let's go over to the frequency counter. 27.79114, it's virtually spot on. We'll just pull that up, but it's, it's neither here nor there. So let's look at, uh, we'll set the receiver on the signal generator. Again, we were on channel 30 yesterday because I was just checking over that dreadful Harvard emergency set. Let's go over to the sign on meter. I'll tell you what, as a special treat, we'll switch it on as well. Dirty volume control. So it's, this seems very reasonable. So for 10 decibel we've got 0 0.49, did I say 12, I meant to. For 10 dB we've got 0 0.39, it likes the 9s. And for 20 if it'll do it, will, there, it's 1.3. So that's all fine. Squelch, let's put the squelch to full. Squelch never opens. And at the sensitive end, set it to threshold. Signal generator back on, straight in. 
0.24 microvolts. So transmit meter this is four. Am I shorting my leads out yet? See how much I'm bothered. Power supply shuts down at 1.5 amps. Um, 100 microvolts on the signal generator and the meter says S7. So what is S9 on this radio? S9 is 100 millivolts. Massive. Meter lamps working. We'll come back to those. Right, open it up. I'll start by going through the transmitter and then we'll start. Um, in fact, I might do the whole tune up and then we'll start worrying as to where the audio's gone. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have to take all the lids off. If I open this up and it's absolutely obvious, like a capacitor with half its works coming out, then there's something we can do about it. And it, to be honest, it sounds like electrolytic capacitors around the audio amplifier, or even the audio amplifier chip itself. The fact it doesn't work on PA, you, you know, when you've got when you've got a set that doesn't have PA, it doesn't help your fault finding in this job. Whereas if you have got PA, there's quite a lot of the circuits running through PA. So once you fix that, you've often fixed all the other faults. So it may not be a useful feature to most people, but, oh, oh, so it it's soldered on and it shouldn't be. So this has been through the wars, hasn't it? So we just wait for the smouldering back to happen. To be honest, I was hoping this was going to be a 35 minute one. Let's just have a look underneath. Can't see anything that shouldn't be. Audio chip's been out before. So, has a second hand duff one gone in? Hmm. Right, so we'll go through the radio as a normal radio. Um, so, I want the meter. And we'll start the VCO. Radio on, channel 20, turn the volume down so it doesn't annoy people. Mr. Chippy's yellow lead. One day we'll be able to give him this back when we get onto Alan's very kind parcel with some crocodile clip leads in. I'll put that camera on, we'll put a camera on that one. So we'll start with the VCO. I'll start by changing glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing. And we want channel 40. Resistor 4 far side. Should be four volts on receive. I mean, that's as near as damn it. It really doesn't need adjusting, but we will. And on transmit, it should also be four volts. It's three point oh five. That does need adjusting. Trust me to put the crop clip there.
Let's put this on low power. The test set's not happy with uh, something on this. It's it's flashing up an um, overload button. Well, uh, it's light. Well, considering the test set's 30 watt capable, and the radio is only giving out 4.1, why is it coming up overload? We may end up with this on the spectrum analyzer. We'll see how it tunes. So we've got four volts on transmit. We've got four volts on receive. Four volts on transmit. Four volts to go to channel one. Somewhere around one point, uh, two point seven, two point. At 1.7 to 2.4, uh, we've got 2.2 there, we've got 2.2 there. So, what was it, 4.3 and um, 3.6 or something, it's now 4 plus 4. Good, so it won't be dropping out on channels in strange weather conditions, hopefully. Right, so go through this tune up. Still got this emergency light coming on the test set. Right, we'll go through it. So that was correctly peaked. And that wasn't quite spot on. That's spot on. I've gone and thrown the twiddler on the floor. So we want peak, peak, and peak. So it's gone to five, so at least it, it wasn't at full white, which would easily kill it. I've got to do this quickly because it can't sustain this kind of power. So, clockwise for 4.4 watts, and anti clockwise on the green one for 3.8 watts, but we set it to 4 because that's the legal limit. And I'm just going to start again because I've just tuned up the whole thing on channel 1. So just get those back to peak. I thought it was too good to be true. So it's always going to develop more power on the lower channels than it is on the higher channels. So I'll have to just do these again. I don't want to overload this at all. Feel those hotter than I would like. Peak, peak, peak. Right, yellow clockwise for 4.4. .4. So peak on the right channel was 4.9. Uh, and then drop it to 4 watts exactly and hopefully the other channels are within 0.1 that's where it's supposed to be we've got 4.0 so channel whatever 40 4.1 channel 
is four. So that's fine. Let's sort low power out. At least he's now doing 120 milliwatts. Uh, where's my service on? One without a spout there. Waggle that around. See whether we can get four uh, four hundred milliwatts. There's four hundred milliwatts. So transmit current now. I've gone and done it again. I've just done that on channel one. Let's check it again on channel. 20, yeah, it needed adjusting. That's 400 milliwatts again. So, what's the current on this? 550 milliamps. If we go to full power, it is 1.21. And that's strange because normally when we do a, do a tune, it's actually more efficient after than it was before. Anyway, I've done it properly. The meter on the front should say four. It more or less does. I will adjust it just for the laugh. And as I've said a million times, this only reads true into a dummy load. When you put it on there, it might read one, it might bang across. You're still doing four watts. Deviation. Oh, we'll do frequency. That's a good idea. It's virtually spot on. This is all neither here nor there. 79125. Let's go to the left today. No, let's go to the right then. That's fine. 2779127. Seven, Always keep it very slightly above and then it drops with age. And, and it's longer between service, isn't it, then? So to the rep at Pi, Philips, Simoco, whatever they were called, ones at Nottingham Radio, why do they continue to have light bulbs on the mobile sets? It generates service work, was the answer. Great. So I want that deviation preset to the centre position. And then we'll work on that one, which looks like it's at full whack. Wallow. So we have got no transmitted audio, so we're going to come back to that. Let's do the receiver. I like the burn mark there. Oh, yeah, the dodgy soldering. It's only um, meter lamps being changed. But what on earth has had to... There's some right dodgy wiring going on at the back of the PA switch. And, it, you know, you don't know whether there's something wrong, do you? That's frustrating. Yeah, he's right, though. It's less, it's less volume than it should be. Right, so we'll start with an S9 equivalent signal. We'll put the oscilloscope. We won't. Just make sure we've got correct recovered audio because that would make it quiet as well. Well, that's brought it up a bit. Still not deafening, is it? Let's go over to the cyanide meter. Now, it's already very good. But I might get a little bit of something out of it. Four dBs. You don't get the extra receive circuits on this one.
Oh, we've gained a bit there. Bit more for the IFs. Oh. Do more scary than this. Right, let's see what uh, signal we've, what um, kind of sensitivity we've got now. So for 12 dB, we've got 0.43. For 10, point three four. For 20, I don't think that's 1, but I'll just go on the other scale. What's it say now? It says 1.15. Let's do the squelch. So we'll set that to full squelch, and then we'll drop this preset. Until it comes in. And that's now 100 microvolts where I want it. So we'll now check the sensitivity. So we'll go to the other end, do the squelch threshold. Signal generator back on. See when it comes in. It's 0.5. meter 100 microvolts on the signal generator and it says s7 so we'll just adjust that one and that should now go up and down accordingly yep yeah. so 100 microvolts it's better than 100 millivolt meter lamp switches parts We've got dirty one. Right, so that's the set aligned. Now all we've got to do is get it to work. There'll be an orange wire cut off from that PA switch. And the soldering is not good. Just like it isn't on the volume control. So I think before we start chasing faults, this is going to have to be addressed. So we're going to have to take the front off, aren't we? This will probably end up on Mr. Chippy's bench. He has about a three-day turnaround one when they end up on his bench. So it does delay them. Don't need the aerial on it anymore because we're going to be sorting this out with the PA, I think. 
If the if that's been changed, is the protection diode okay? Because that's normally the reason it's been reverse polarity at some time. See one. Oh, please don't tell me it's one way. See, you've lost all the uh, decoupling capacitors from the microphone socket here. So that's been messed with. It may be that you've got to unsolder the microphone socket to take the front off. At the moment there's enough wire. There's no shrouds there, which there should be. So what we've got to do, so which one is it? The tone one is that one. Even that's been messed with. Just make sure that works. I have to plug the mic back in, aren't I? going to have to take this switch out I don't know if you can see how many stray wires there are there. You just hope they've got the right ones on there, don't you? I'll pause the video, I think we'll pass. So I'm afraid it's another overdub. I don't know what's happened to the sound, but it isn't there, which is three days later, Mr. Chippy has done the switches as you can see I'm waggling it around and the volume control so it's a different type of volume control that's been fitted and uh, he's had to tidy up the wiring on that because there was a lot of intermittency now I've not put the switch back because at this stage we're not quite sure which way around it is until I power it up and find out which is PA and which is CB Powering it back up, let's see what mode we are actually in. And what we discover, we've still got low audio and we've still got, well, exceptionally low audio and we've still got um, very quiet receive audio. So it's affecting the transmitted audio, which is virtually non-existent it's affecting 
the volume of the actual receiver. As you saw, we tuned it up successfully with it at much lower volume, but uh, it was probably about quarter of a watt output instead of four watts output. So just listen to myself on my walkie talkie and just see how low that volume actually is. And it's it is barely discernible that there's a voice there. Turn the deviation up to uh I'm turning up the S meter I'm turning up the RF meter by mistake. But we've got the deviation at full just to kind of prove the point. So we've got to find a common denominator. What is causing there to be a lack of transmitted audio, no PA audio, and a very quiet receive? So we're going to look towards that audio amplifier. Now that's been soldered before. And it looks, it's possible that somebody's changed that before, but we don't know whether they've changed it for a working device, because it doesn't look a new device. When you start looking at the printing, it looks like it's been recovered out of something, but it's been properly put in. It's not, um, you know, it's it's not being done by a, a gas poker. So when I poked the input pin with my metal screwdriver there. I got a very low audio and I expect quite a lot of audio on the preamplifier input. So it starts to tell me that we've either got duff capacitors or a duff IC or the capacitors have killed the IC, one or the other. So with some blown up circuit diagrams, we're looking around the TA7205 Toshiba audio chip and looking for electrolytic capacitors that could cause a, a problem here. I think there's about nine in this part in the audio circuit, so I just did a blanket job and changed them all. And upon doing that and testing the capacitors that came out, two were actually faulty. I'm not talking about ones which are slightly out of spec, but two were actually faulty. Uh, so that was a good move, but whether or not that was the cause of the problem or whether we've got multiple causes. This radio has clearly been around the houses for a long time, not getting fixed. Changing the audio IC for a brand new one. So with the new audio IC soldered into position, now going to put my metal screwdriver on that input pin, and now I've got the noise that I expect, I've got the volume I expect, but it doesn't fix the radio. When I come to check, we've got a bit of audio on PA, and we've got a bit of audio being transmitted. And if you wind the deviation right up, you can actually make it about as loud as a new radio, but not as loud as it should be. I think we were able to get something like 1.4 kilohertz deviation with the deviation at four, but it's clearly not right. So finally, we get to the root of the problem. So now, of course, have the capacitors killed this? Is it a power mic that's been wrongly connected that's killed it? So you can see there's three transistors. There's transistor 22, transistor 15, the ALC, and the one above which I can't see the number of at the moment. So the first transistor we changed was transistor 22 to SC945. What I discovered as I unsold that is one of the legs fell off. So of course was that faulty before or was it faulty taking it out? It's not that I'm rough with it but through corrosion that leg fell off so I was unable to test the device. Nevertheless I replaced it, got them in stock so that's got a new one in. Now when I put my finger via a screwdriver metal screwdriver as a probe onto the right hand transistor the third one you can see not where I'm pointing at the moment the third one there 
I could feel that we'd got the full audio amplifier running because having changed the audio IC, touching the input, we'd got the full noise you'd expect from using your finger as, a, as an input. So we've got it on that third transistor, the AF amp transistor 13. We can now see that 2S, is it 2SC1845 or 2 I can't see. Anyway, that third transistor had got all the kind of voltages and it reacted in the way I would expect from using my finger as an input. So having changed transistor 22, there was no change in the way the thing performed. We then came to changing transistor 15. And when I took that out, it read open circuit in all directions. Oh, it's that one that's see it 2SA, isn't it? 2SA um, 584, is it? Something like that. So I went into uh, stores department and I found we'd got 200 of them in stock, Panasonic branded. So I put a new one in. And once I'd done that, the full normal operation on everything that wasn't working was then working. So to kind of recap, we'd had to change the TA7205 because uh, putting an input onto that only got as a, a low audio output. Changing about nine capacitors uh, in the audio side here, uh, two were faulty. So, you know, was it that that's, that's pushed it over? Or then we find that that um, ALC transistor's uh, open circuit, is it blown apart because somebody's put volts up the mic thing? I don't know. I think this radio has probably not worked probably since the 80s. It's clearly been around the houses a lot. You only got to look at the fact it's got a soldered in speaker. Uh, and, and people have kept putting it on one side. And, um, you know, the fact that the audio C had been re had been replaced, it certainly looks like it's been replaced, and it looks like it's a used one that went in. Well, did that work for a kind of work, and then it failed again? I don't know, we'll, we'll un, <laughs> we'll un uh, set that one uh, back to how it should be, having fiddled with it wrongly as the deviation control. And we soon get the deviation back where it was, and then a little talk into my walkie talkie find everything is as it should be and public address is working too so the next section i've re-recorded that hopefully with sound and that's where we put the radio on an aerial and uh, at 7 30 in the morning when i recorded that guess what nobody was on but that's not unusual here in the middle of nowhere and um, i did demonstrate that the pa was at full volume so it has made a really lovely radio i don't see many of these and uh, this is now the fourth one I've seen uh, in uh, since 1980. Foo, 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 think 86, when I think we started um, doing this work. So we'll go over to the final part. I'll just let you this this play out with some of the pictures. I'll edit that together, and um, there you go. End of overdub. So here we are with a new final section to this video. I just unplugged the extension speakers. We've done the on the air test yesterday. And I'm glad I started editing this video before sending this radio back to the customer. So, see if anybody's on 19 at half seven in the morning. One nine a Roger. Tone control works. PA works. Oh, I said I was about to say as demonstrated in the video. But you didn't get that demonstration because, of course, there was no sound. So we'll just pop that onto PA. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Absolutely spot on. Bit of foreign interference. So when we go through this, 
Well, that's the realistic. Because <laughs> I did this the day I had to do the realistic whilst Mr. Chippy was working on that. So it's now 2.2 to 2.5 kilohertz. Uh, the mic he supplied and the built-in speaker is absolutely fine um, and that's they've been rewired there we go very nice set excellent receive and we even had a success on low power on this one on the scratchy corner test so I must remember that the shaman's mic is the customers So is there anything in it between the customer's new coffin mic and ours and, it, and Mr. Chippy says, uh, I didn't notice you changed mics halfway through the test. So what's the conclusion? What, why has this had such failure? Because out of those capacitors, which I changed about one, two, three, four, five, six, I changed eight capacitors, two of them were faulty. We changed the 2SC945 uh, which was the switching transistor in the mic audio side of things uh, and a leg fell off it during taking it out so I wasn't able to test that but only, as I said in the video earlier only about 16 pence then it was a 2SA564 which was the next transistor along um, this one, transistor 15 which was absolutely open circuit in all directions so that's the one the leg fell off I knew that was working alright we changed the capacitors around but why is that blown up? Has somebody put volts up it, trying to put some dodgy power mic on? I don't know. Or have the capacitors killed it? So we have well, the preamp section of that audio IC dead, two capacitors needing changing, and that transistor. So quite some extensive fault finding, and I hope you enjoyed it. The on-the-air test is going to be up very shortly because it's already been done. Thanks for watching.